that uh, details of that uh, inquiry report have now just been published. Uh, Sir Martin Morbick, who chaired that inquiry for the last seven years since the Grenfell Tower, took uh, 72 lives in uh, 2017 on that fateful, fateful night in June when the entire tower just went up in flames and pretty much everything that could go wrong went wrong, whether it was on the night, was whether it was in the many, many years uh, beforehand uh, when uh, the work was done uh, to uh, put on what well, was effectively flammable cladding on that building. Uh, those, uh, that report has concluded, I mean, astonishingly, basically, that the Conservative government at the time, in June 2017, was, in the words of Sir Martin Morbeck, well aware, he says, of the deadly risks posed by combustible cladding and insulation, but failed to act on what they knew. He says that government officials were complacent, defensive and dismissive on fire safety. Cutting red trait was prioritised over safety. Uh, Sir Martin has also concluded there was systemic dishonesty from cladding and insulation firms, which resulted in hazardous materials being applied to Grenfell Tower. He says there was a toxic relationship between residents of the Grenfell Tower and the Tenants Management Organisation, which was responsible for running services. And Grenfell residents who raised concerns were dismissed as militant troublemakers he said that many opportunities for the government to identify risks uh, were were completely and utterly missed uh, failure to act on what they know uh, criticizing not just the government but pretty criticizing the council pretty criticizing pretty much every building firm involved as well it is a very very damning conclusion the regulation of buildings he says was seriously defective it's an extraordinary, extraordinary story. It costs 72 lives. We're seven years on. We still don't have, as a result of this inquiry taking so long, as they often do, a single person charged with any crime in relation to this, a single company that has uh, been charged with corporate manslaughter, despite them knowingly putting basically flammable, combustible uh, cladding onto a building where hundreds and hundreds of people had their lives and hundreds and hundreds of people were woken by deadly smoke and flames on the night uh, in June 2017 and sadly 72 of those perished as a result of those failures. Let's talk about this right now with Robert Atkinson. He's a former Labour councillor for the Grenfell, That's the right. ward in which Grenfell was in Kensington and Chelsea. I remember the talk at the time, Robert, was, you know, this is what the richest borough in, in, in Britain. Yeah. This, however, was a council, obviously council-owned block, a block in which um, uh, many people who were certainly not the, the very rich mm. and the famous normally we, we Just ordinary with people from Chelsea. the stable community. Indeed. Um, and I think so many of us can remember watching those flames on that night. And there are so many things that went wrong on the night. But this report, just what we've heard so far, is looking into all the things that went wrong in the years to come. Um, is, is there anything new there? Because I'm thinking, I knew all of this before. No, I think we got this in the first part of yeah. the report. I'm hoping that names will be named um, and it, from the headlines you've already seen, it looks as if he has taken a broader view. Mm. Uh, and I think one of the problems we've had is they've cited sort of like a Mexican firing squad that everybody is blaming everybody else. Yeah. And I do hope that you know, the report can now grab hold of that and we can mm. finally see some prosecution. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the only way that we focus the minds of the companies that do this, because there's so much evidence that's come out uh, during this process, whereby numerous of the firms, the firms who made the cladding, uh, the firms who were bidding to do the work, and this basically was, this was work to basically prettify this rather ugly tower block on the outside. It was supposed to be a bit eco as well. Cladding would be, uh, be insulation as well. But the decision to put on cladding and to take the lowest one of the lowest bids to put on the cladding which which was which let's face it the the firm knew was combustible oh, yes. they mean, knew, there's no doubt at all this this cladding it was illegal in germany because there'd been yeah. a high rise fire there is no doubt that at the bottom of all this was that the contractors were told to save money yeah. and saving that money putting mm. stuff on which they knew yeah. to be combustible led to the loss of those lives. And we also know that, that the Grenfell residents, and we and we can, I was on air in 2017 when this story uh, uh, was, was first happening, and I, in the, the, that very morning, I remember, we, we learned that Grenfell residents had been writing to the council <laughs> numerous reports about, no, you put this cladding on that's unsafe, mm. you know, the lifts don't work, the fire safety doesn't work, the, the sprinklers don't work, yeah. there's none, nothing, nothing that's supposed to work works in a very high rise building with only one staircase we are we, we are a disaster waiting to happen and as as we've been told they were dismissed as militant troublemakers yes.
Yes, and I mean, we as the councillors for the area had told them that the lifts weren't working. We had told them that the contractors were treating the residents with derision. So, as I say, I do hope that names will be named mm. and that there's going to be no more excuses for not yep. prosecuting. I mean, this was a Conservative-run council at the time. Yes. Um, you were a leader of the Labour group uh, it, it, at the time in, in, in Kensington and Chelsea. You called on pretty much everyone involved to resign, didn't you? Who actually uh, ended up resigning over this? Because there was, there was at least some uh, sort of mea culpa by the, by the local uh, council. Which they did, yes. That they are the only This was the councillors or the or council leaders? The, ex the, the, the council <laughs> leaders, the cabinet, all went. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I will give them credit for is that they accepted from the beginning that they have responsibilities. Yeah. Nobody else has done that. So those, but what I do say is that those who took the decisions at the top all appear to have been able to walk away yes. from it and rebuild their lives, some of them in considerable luxury, whereas the local community is still there with the ruins of the tower d dominating this, seven years later. Yeah, this is extraordinary. We, I drive past there quite often and this tower and with all the, you know, the big Grenfell heart and, mm. and all the scaffolding is still up seven years on. Why, why has it not been taken down? Well, we were told at the time that it was the, uh, the police wished it to be kept there as it was the scene of a crime. Thank <laughs> God it was covered up because that made it slightly better. Uh, to begin with, I was not pushing for early demolition because it was a reminder to people as they walked along the West Way so that the situation wouldn't be... Don't, 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 let, it, don't let it be forgotten. But there's a, you know, it's above a school. There's skill, schools in the shadow of the tower. Yep. How can the community seek to move on to recover yep. whilst we're still reminded every day by the ruins of the tower. And I mean, I mean, this is the thing, I mean, and again, we've still got people who left, you know, look, not only did 72 people lose their lives, 71 on the night and one, little bit, one later on in hospital, um, uh, but we've got not just their loved ones who are grieving, people who lived with them out of their homes, people in temporary accommodation for a very long time. Many of those still in temporary accommodation, still not got found permanent accommodation. There have been some disputes over how people, you know, what, what compensation they've got. Because as it turned out, there were an awful lot of people who were renting out their homes and weren't there on the night and who were then still entitled to accommodation. The council basically had to rehouse... I think twice the number of people that were officially living in Grenfell at the well, time? Uh, no, I think it, it, it was more that unrealistic promises were made. Theresa May came and said, we'll house, we'll rehouse everybody within a week. It was, yeah. it, Funnily it, enough, there isn't that much accommodation to sitting available. Yes, and the, the council did say that. And I think the council then did go to some efforts to house people in places where they wanted to be. Again, the pressure was to move away well, some people wanted to move away. Other people wanted to stay in the community. With their friend, yeah. family and yeah. friends, where so their children were at school. I'm not having it that the residents were in any way to blame. Yeah. The residents were given promises, which will turn out... Mm. The residents were also promised that their findings will be... The changes will be made as of that Easter. Yeah. But seven years seven later. Seven years on, and that's it. People still living with this. Um, and one of the biggest issues with this, of course, as we were saying, is is the lack of any criminal charges being brought so we can, we can get yeah. some justice for this. Because it's all very well someone being chastised in a report. That doesn't actually focus enough minds because we know that lessons haven't been learned because we know it was discovered very soon after that hundreds, thousands upon thousands yeah. of buildings in this country There's have a very similar cladding. fire last week in Dagenham. In Dagenham. And uh, it's a miracle, it's a simple matter of luck that people didn't yeah. die. Very similar cladding. Not the exact same cladding, but very similar cladding. And we know that 340,000 people are believed to still be living in unsafe cladding in a total of 11,000 buildings. So I think to an extent the, the, the report or the imminence of the report has been used as an excuse not to act. Yeah. Central government, the number of ministers that have been and gone, making promises which are then not fulfilled, passed on to their successors. Yeah. Thank God we've now got some decent local MPs who are going to hold the new government's nose to the, to the grindstone, and, and it's to be hoped they get on with it. But also, we were told at the time that the the criminal case was going to, su to proceed in tandem yeah. with the with the inquiry. Now we're told, oh, we're going to we're going to start the criminal case. I, now. I understand they have been investigating the fire separately, but of course nothing nothing goes ahead because people, when they give evidence in the inquiry, often actually they then are allowed to n not give full evidence because they say it could in it yeah. could actually incriminate them if there is criminal inquiry. But we see this again and again. 
inquiries taking a ridiculous amount of time. Now, I mean, Sir Martin's report, it runs to nearly 1,700 pages, and he's taken the testimony of hundreds of witnesses, yes. including not just those who witnessed what happened on the night, fire brigade, senior people on the ground, uh, absolute heroes on the night, by the way, uh, risking their own lives to save people, um, and uh, but, but, but also the building regulators and inspectors. One of the things he's confused, uh, concluded, just to say his words here, government officials were, he says, complacent, defensive and dismissive on fire safety, cutting red tape, cutting costs was prioritised. Yeah. But also he says there was an inappropriate relationship between approved inspectors for building safety and those they were inspecting. Now, one of the things I discovered on the morning after the fire, which I was... I remember just going, you must be kidding. This is, a, this is a joke. This cannot be true. That I, with no qualifications whatsoever in anything to do with fire safety or building regulation, architecture, nothing, de nada, zero, that I could turn up with my clipboard and my high-vis jacket yeah. and say, yep, this tower block is completely safe. I'm signing it off. And that would be legal. Yes. That's so, how bad our building regulations yeah, are. Yeah. The, the, the desire to deregulate <laughs> meant that, in effect, they were marking their own homework. The builders then had their own people to inspect and then they certified themselves. Amazingly. Amazingly, they yeah. said it was fine. And again and again, the, re the evidence is very clear that's come out in witness testimony and often whistleblowers, and, and actually a lot of it's come out in emails that have been uh, acquired mm. by the, uh, the the inquiry, uh, you know, saying, right, we've done the safety test on this particular bit of cladding and it doesn't pass. So what we're going to do is we're going to put another board behind it and another board in front mm. of it, and then it will be fine. So they do that. Well, that's up to fine, except that's not how it's going to yeah. be put on... So it passes the safety test overall, but that's not how it's put on buildings. So it's unsafe. I mean, one firefighter who was there on the scene, um, he's talked about how, it, to all intents and purposes, it's like petrol had been poured all over the building. Yes. Well, I saw the cladding melting myself, and I raised that immediately with the town hall, and I was told, we mustn't rush to judgment. Well, we still haven't got to judgment. Yeah, seven we? years, it ain't a rush. Yeah. I mean, one of the other issues on the night, of course, was the stay put advice from the fire brigade. And this is standard, and it saves lives in yeah. a normal building built to fire safety regulations as we understand them, that you have a fire, and this fire was reported in early hours, a fridge freezer on the fourth floor. Yeah. Um, by the way, he literally raised the alarm, he woke other people, the fire brigade arrived, they put the fire out, they thought, thought it was all done. And, of course, mm. it was already inside the cladding, was creeping up the building. It's now been admitted that the fire brigade was wrong and, and that they have act changed lots of advice since the phase one of this report a number but of years ago. But they were acting on the information but, they, but they had. had. Which was that this building and, was complied with And if the safety. fire doors had worked, if the... If, if the lift was... If, 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 yes. if, if yes. everything was working, as it was legally required yeah. to do. But they basically... People were told, stay put in your flat, don't worry. You're safer in the flat than hundreds yeah. of people are running down the stairs, especially lots of elderly, yeah. disabled people who couldn't get down the stairs, we understand. And, and, and they, they were basically told, stay in your homes. And then, when the fire was creeping up, told... Well, basically, people just started moving upwards and going to the tower, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, the, to the top. Of course obviously thinking we're in a Bruce Willis film and they're going to be rescued by a helicopter yes. because what else? And, and people were calling their loved ones saying, what should I do? And their loved ones were saying, get out, the whole tower's on fire. Yes. You know, the whole, I mean, it, it is almost like a Hollywood disaster well, movie. People what happened, deferred to authority and it turned out that the authority didn't know what they were doing. Well, and, they didn't and, change and, their advice soon enough when they realised yes. this is all going completely yes. wrong. And there wasn't enough money had been spent on communications within and to the fire service. I don't blame the fire service for that. No, I blame lack of money. I blame I blame them for the lack of updating yeah. of, of what the fire service should I be doing. I certainly don't. Not a moment of blame for the firefighters Indeed. on the scene who risked their lives. I mean, they really, really did. Let me just read a list though of what Sir Martin Borg says. He lists those who he who the report deems responsible. Um, I mean, this is this is a long list. Um, he says he says. Um, the simple truth is that the deaths that occurred were all avoidable and those who lived in the tower were badly failed over a number of years and in a number of different ways by those who were responsible for ensuring the safety of the building and its occupants. He says, those who are responsible, the government, the tenant management organiser, the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, those who manufactured and supplied the materials used in the refurbishment, 
those who certified their suitability for use on high-rise buildings, the architect, the principal contractor, some of its subcontractors, particularly he names Harley Curtain Wall and its successor Harley Facades, some of the consultants, he particularly names the fire engineer Exova Warrington Fire, the local authorities building control department, the London Fire Brigade. He says not all of them bear the same degree of responsibility for the eventual disaster, but as our report shows, he says, all contributed to it in one way or another, mm. in most cases through incompetence, but in some cases through dishonesty and greed. Indeed. Your reaction to that? I think no, he's, he's got it right. There is a difference between those who were acting on inaccurate information, but there were other people who knew what was happening, and you, you got some of the testimony during the time. They were instructed to lose things, mm -hmm. to not re not recall. That's uh, I heard an awful lot of that during I the... I don't recall. Yeah. So you haven't lied. You can't be prosecuted for not lying because they don't know whether you do or not. Um, people need to go to jail, though, don't they? I do hope so, but I have no confidence that, that they will because proving, uh, proving competence is, is a difficult thing to do. It, yes, it's my sincere hope that some people do go to jail, but I want the case to be over. I want the prosecutions to happen. We can't have that tower hanging over North Kensington yep. for another seven years. No, indeed. And we need to know also that every single person in, in a high-rise building, or even a really medium-rise building, is safe. And right yep. now, 340,000 people are still living in property. And again, this is something that came up a lot of the time, that it was because these people were poor and a lot of them were of colour that, that people didn't care. There are plenty of very well-off white people who own their own homes mm. who are still in buildings they can't sell yes. because of the cladding. This is an issue. It crosses classes, it crosses colour. It's not about that. Yeah. This and is just about central government greed. has responsibility for this. Yep. And because of the chaos of the last Conservative government, things did not happen. We now have, I believe, a stable Labour government who will take actions in this, as in the other things that were mm -hmm. not been done because we've had a government in drift. Well, Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer has just issued a statement saying the report from Sir Martin Moorbick uh, inquiry identified substantial and widespread failings. He said the government will carefully consider the report and its recommendations, he says, to ensure that such a tragedy cannot occur again. Do you have any faith that another tragedy won't occur again? I have more confidence in this government actually doing something. We're, but again, I don't, do you know, we, I don't we, we, at we all. Do, I, ju judge not, them not, by not, their actions. Not party political. I, mm. I, I simply, I think that our, I think our bureaucracy, I think in local councils and in government now, is now absolutely incapable of taking tough, necessary action that is needed to stop these things happening. Well, it, 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 if private contractors, if local authorities, landlords are not going to get on with making the building safe, then it needs to be taken out of their hands and the government needs to act to spend the money and then recover the money afterwards. But we've got situations, as, as you say, there's tens of thousands of people know that they are living in unsafe buildings. And we had a fire last week, so yes, it could happen again tonight. Yeah. And, that, and that's what people are living with, which yes. is just extraordinary, isn't it? Just finally, I was talking a little bit earlier about, you know, whether it's a terror attack, whether it's an awful tragedy like this, which, again, could equally have been, uh, have been prevented. We do a lot of emoting in this country. There's a lot of how do you feel. And, of course, that matters. Of course, how people feel. People are impacted personally. There are people who lost loved ones, people who lost their lives, people who... who who, whose lives will never be the same again, who, who have nightmares every night about the terrors they went through. Of course, I mean, no-one's discounting that. But at the end of the day, there comes a time the emoting has to end and action has yes. to happen. Yes. This is Ju now about saving future lives. Judge this government by its actions now. OK. Let's watch. Really appreciate you joining us, Robert Atkins, a former Labour councillor for the Grenfell Ward. Um, Claire Pissell is still with us. She's a former Conservative government advisor. Now, you worked in the last Conservative mm -hmm. government. No, it, it was in chaos. I, I have no, I'm genuinely, I have no particular hope that the next government, this now current government, will be any better. I really don't. I've lost all faith in, in this country to run things at all. But, I mean, it's, it's a hard-hitting report. There were a lot of um, complaints early on from the community that this was some you know, posh bloke who'd been brought in, establishment figure, uh, former judge to be brought into to this. But there's no doubt at all he has not pulled his punches in this report. He's naming yeah. names. He absolutely is, and it's right to do so. In 1,700 pages, he has listed the people and has been quite brutal with the actions now I'd say I, fair yes <laughs> yeah but put it out there in really strong terms now I don't disagree that uh, the previous Conservative administration was chaotic 
I don't believe that the current Labour administration are going to deal with this any differently because the problem with inquiries you will come out with recommendations but there is absolutely zero incentive to carry those out so unless the Labour government comes down incredibly hard on these companies there is going oh, to be and no then it's still going to take many years is yeah. it is it not yeah. for anything to come through criminal court let alone civil court there'll still be civil court yeah. actions I would expect but that won't stop the government changing regulations that won't stop fire regulations, building regulations. Yeah. And, 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 that and let's have a system where I can't turn up and, turn up and sign off a building as safe. Maybe, maybe that's a good start. I no, I mean, I'm not joking. I mean, genuinely, yeah. that's yeah. a good start, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think the local authorities, all local authorities, have that responsibility to their residents that they don't put somebody mm. like you, no, no disrespect yeah. to you, in charge with a clipboard. Uh, building regulations need to be reviewed yeah. across do, the country. Do you know one of my things? I think mm. we need to have individual named people who make these decisions yeah, and have to own them. And I think that in, 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 in every case, you know, whether it's probation, whether it's, I want an individual named person. It doesn't have to be made public unless something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. But I want, are, are you happy? that this mm -hmm. is definitely safe. Have you, you know, show us the evidence why you believe that's safe. Are you going to be personally responsible if something goes wrong, that you are going to take the blame and you will spend the rest of your life in jail? Because if you're not, don't sign it off. Now, yeah. I, that would focus minds, would it not, a bit more? Well, you hear a lot less talk of getting rid of red tape because yeah. it turned mm -hmm. out that getting rid of what that was actually getting rid of, it, of standards. Here's the thing. It's harder to build a con get planning permission for a new conservatory than it is to get approval for completely and utterly combustible cladding to go up on a tower block many, many hundreds of metres high. Indeed. Now, that is, there's, the, there's, there's good red tape and there's bad red tape and as we can see we had bad red tape that didn't save lives and actually cost lives